So YouTube, in this video we're going to use the definition of the derivative to find the slope of the graph of this given equation here, and that a given equation is this, f of x equals 4x squared minus 5x. So a little bit prettier to write it this way, but 4x squared minus 5x. Okay, so here uh, we want to find the slope of this graph at any given value x. So really what we're saying is we want to find the derivative function. So let's go ahead and start with this. We say, recall that the derivative function is first of all written f prime of x. So if our original function is f of x, we say the derivative function is f prime of x, okay? And this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of this expression right here. We say the expression is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, okay? So <clears throat> this entire expression, uh, if we wanted to evaluate it, you know, we already know f of x in the top right here, and h is just kind of h in the bottom, but we need to find f of x plus h, so I always like to do this off to the side. We say f of x plus h. So our original expression, recall, was 4x squared minus 5x. So every instance of x we're going to take out, uh, and we're going to put in, uh, we're going to put in x plus h, or this this quantity. So we say x plus h, x plus h. And so now here's where some good algebra comes in. But we're going to expand all this and then combine like terms. So let's talk about what we have. We say 4 times x plus h squared. Recall that we got to do exponents first. We got to foil this. Uh, so come on in. So sorry, uh, we have 4 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Uh, minus 5x minus 5h and so we're going to go ahead and distribute this 4 here and we end up with this expression 4x squared plus 8xh plus 4h squared minus 5x minus 5h and so you'd say uh, can I combine like terms well there's nothing that goes together here but this is indeed f of x plus h or the entire expression that we're going to need to substitute into this for our derivative. So let's go ahead and find this derivative, shall we? We say f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of this ginormous expression. So we say we have this f of x plus h. Well, that's really big. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit wider. And then minus. And then we say, OK, so f of x is all over h. Let's go ahead and start with this, the easy part. Uh, the easy part would be f of x here on the right. We say this is 4x squared minus 5x. Now, on the left here, we had all of this uh, good stuff here. I'm going to try to write smaller. We say 4x squared uh, plus 8xh plus 4h squared minus 5x. Will it fit? I think it will. Minus 5h. So let's start having this conversation. Now, you notice we have a difference here. If we were to distribute now this negative sign, we'd have this as a positive. Uh, but everything in here would have switched their signs. So we have negative 4x squared, uh, but now a positive 5x. And so combining like terms on the top, which you know this happens a lot, but consider this. We say this negative 4x squared on the right, it's going to cancel out with our positive 4x squared on the left. And uh, this positive 5x here should cancel out with our negative 5x. And uh, just like a lot of my other videos, when we're using this definition of the derivative to evaluate for the slope of graph at any point x, oh, that's a mouthful, uh, we say it's all over h, but the top, you notice, is an expression containing all h's in it. And this is very beautiful. The reason why is because if we want to evaluate this limit, one way to do it is to direct substitute in this value for every instance of what the variable that is approaching our value is. So we say that is h in this case. If I were to put in a 0 for all of those h's, uh, keep in mind you get 0 over 0. And uh, this has a name, and it's called indeterminate form. And so that's something that we really uh, you know, can't do much with. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the dividing out technique, where on the top here, well, we could just rewrite this as the limit. Again, the limit as h goes to 0, of, uh, and we'll factor out an h, we say of this h uh, times 8x plus 4h uh, minus 5 and this is all over h and now our h is canceled and so finally we have this the limit as h approaches 0 of oops we don't need the vinculum any longer we say of 8x plus 4h let me write that for a little bit better 4h minus 5 now 
When we direct substitute this value in for h this time, we say really what happens is this middle term just drops out and becomes zero. And so since we've evaluated the limit, now we can say this. Um, one second. Now we can say this. This limit is equal to f prime of x mind u, which is our derivative, and is also equal to 8x minus 5. So hey, this function right here, stick it in your pocket, is so awesome. Guess what it does for us? It lets us know the slope of the graph at any given x value. And so what I did actually was I graphed this over in some graphing software here, GeoGebra. Um, but let's say for instance at the x value 1 here. You can see our, our graph in blue. I've already dropped in a point A and uh, a tangent line going to this point A to represent the slope of our graph at the x value. So if I drag this over to an x value of 1-ish, see how it clicks into place there. We say estimate the slope of this orange line because that's going to be the slope of the graph at that, at that x value. So we say notice it goes up like 1, 2, 3, over 1. So the slope should be about 3. So uh, that was at the x value 1. What we're going to do is we're going to go back over here to our derivative function, which is the bottom right one here. We're going to find f prime of, say, 1, which would be 8 times blank minus 5, in which our blank here, this instance, would be 8. Or, or 1, but we get 8 minus 5, and this equals 3. So recall this here. Okay, so this is our slope. Slope. And slope at x equals 1. So what if I wanted to find, I don't know, let's go look at the graph. This is kind of fun. Let's go do a negative slope. Um, you know, I might even have to move our graph a little bit here. What if I wanted to find the slope at negative 1? Well, if I pull this over here to an x value negative 1, now we're clear up here. Whoa. There it is. About, about right there. So the slope of this graph, oh, it's not exact. I'm going to have to really kind of, you know, look at this. We say down 1, 2, 3. But it actually goes all the way down to 0 from a height of 9. So it goes down 9 and then some more. We say, whoops, uh, goes down 9, 10, 11, 12, about 13, and then over 1. So uh, like, like negative 13 maybe is the slope of our graph here. So here's what we're going to do. I'll use our derivative function. Again, use the derivative function. We say find f prime, but we want to find f prime at the x value negative 1. And so we get 8 times negative 1 minus 5, which is 8. Negative 8 minus 5, mind you, uh, is negative 13. Again, we get a slope. So I just think this is very exciting. It's kind of profound. You can find the slope of a graph at any x value so long as you use this derivative function uh, down here on the right that we got by using the definition uh, that we went through on the left. So enjoy.